Hi, you're watching Flight Steinberg's YouTube channel. On one of my last videos on the Pico Tracker, I got a lot of comments, and many people wrote that you can have the same thing for less money by running Little Piggy Tracker on one of these Linux based Ambernic consoles. And I hope I pronounced that correctly. So, today, let's take a look at that claim is true and what the advantages or disadvantages of using this setup are. And if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. So, you've probably seen these new handheld consoles somewhere online. They're in the legal grey area regarding the games they come with, but we're not here for that. Compared to those older 10,000 retro games wrapped in questionable hardware, these new consoles are built solidly, have a very nice screen, relatively big RAM and a modern ARM Cortex quad-core CPU. And they're running Linux. And you can find a number of custom-made Linux distributions online. This model here has audio and HDMI out. So, when I posted my video on the Pico Tracker, some viewers told me to run a software named Little GP Tracker on one of these consoles. So, I searched for that app on the internet and found a readily compiled version on the page I'll link in this video's description. Download this, unzip it, then insert the SD card that came with the games console into your PC and copy the app to the ROM's apps folder as seen in the video right now. Then put the SD card back into the games console and turn it on again. This tracker app will run on a Linux distribution named Garlic OS, which already is pre-installed on the SD card that comes with the gaming console. Just go to System Settings and click on Switch OS, then Reboot. Now you'll find the tracker in the Apps section. Launch it from there, load the demo song and then press Start to listen to it. I'm going to add my own samples. Shut down the console, take out the SD card and put it into your PC again. Then record some samples. Alright, samples are recorded, now copy them to the ROMs apps LGBT samples lib folder as seen in the video and best is to use standard WAV files and not to have spaces in the file name. Other than that, most samples worked flawlessly. Ok, let's create a track. Turn this on and go to Consoles, Apps and launch LGPT from there. Then create a new song by moving the cursor to that option using the D-pad and pressing A. Give that song a name by pressing and holding A and selecting the letters with the D-pad. Then press OK and you're on the main screen. Here you can see the song name on top, a map of all the menus on the left and a track overview on the right side. As you can see here, there are 8 tracks you can use. We're on the main screen screen here where the chains can be arranged to a song. A chain is a sequence of up to 16 patterns and a pattern is a sequence of up to 16 notes. Let's create a new chain by pressing A on the first track. We can then navigate to the chain editor screen by holding the rightmost paddle and pressing right on the D-pad. On this screen, push A to create a new pattern. Then move to the Pattern Editor screen by pressing the rightmost paddle and right on the D-pad once again and repeat that to continue to the Instrument screen. 
Here you can listen to and load samples to use in your music. Double pushing the A button on the first row will open a file dialog. Use the D-pad to select the directory and files. Pushing A once again will play back the samples you're currently focusing on. Moving the cursor to the import menu and then selecting a sample with the A button will load the sample into memory. Let's start by listening to and importing some drum sounds. All the instruments are loaded. Exit the file dialog and hold down the A key on the first line and push the D-pad right to select the bass drum sound. Now go back to the pattern editor screen by holding the right pedal and pressing left. Add a note on every fourth line by pushing A in the first column. Then push start to listen to your four to the floor beat. Let's reduce the BPM to something more manageable. Use the pedal and D-pad to move to the song editor screen and then move upwards to the settings screen. Reduce the BPM to around 100 by holding A and pushing down for steps of 10 or left and right for increments of 1. Then go back to the pattern editor screen and press start once again. Change the instrument number of the second and fourth note by holding A and pressing right in the second column, and we've got this. Go to the instrument screen and select the hi-hat sound. You can adjust its volume in the second line. Return to the pattern editor then and insert notes in between your bass drum and clap sounds. Let's change the last note to an open hi-hat in the same way and our simple beat is done. Let's add chords and bass to this track. From here on I won't explain steps I've already covered. On the instrument screen I'm importing some samples I've prepared for this. Then go back to the song screen. Create a new chain in the second column. Make sure it's not the chain that's already in use on the first track by increasing the number. Then go to the chain editor screen and create a new pattern. Again, make sure it's a new pattern by choosing a number that's higher than all the patterns you've created so far. On the pattern editor screen, I'm adding a note and change the instrument to one of the chord samples. I want to create a chord progression that moves to the next chord after two measures. As the pattern sequencer has only 16 steps, how do we do that? Well, go back to the chain editor screen and add a new pattern on the third line. Create a new pattern, add another note, playing the next chord. I'll repeat that for the next two chords in my chord progression as well. Now press play on the chain editor screen and oh well, the tracker plays back the first chord only. Why is that? Well, you can't place empty slots in a chain. So next, create an empty pattern and fill the blanks with that. Now your chord progression will be played back as intended. I've also prepared a sampled bass line, which I insert into my song much the same way. Now on the song screen, you can push play and listen to the result. The tracker will loop all chains until the longest chain has been played through at least once. Let's use a table on the pad sound now to create a side chaining like effect. 
Tables are like patterns that contain control values only. You can assign tables to a pattern at any given point. To use them, navigate to the Pattern Editor and then press Paddle and Down. There are numerous control commands to use here. I'm going to change the filter cutoff frequency over time, so the filter will be closed each time there's a bass drum sound. And here's the result. Now this table is playing at twice the speed I'd like it to. So let's add a groove to this table, which keeps that in check. A groove will determine how long each step in your sequence is played. The default is 6 ticks. You can use this to swing and groove, but I'll just use it to slow down my table. Now I can assign this table to every chord pattern and then we've got a sidechain like effect on the synthesizer pad sound. Ok, let's add a MIDI track now. Here I'm connecting my battery powered Reface DX to the USB port of the console using this Type 2 to USB-C adapter. Boot the console, start the tracker, press pedal and up to go to the settings screen, then go to the MIDI line and nothing. And that's because neither GarlicOS nor this tracker were compiled with MIDI support built in. The Picker Track, on the other hand, has MIDI support built right into it and also comes with a 3.5mm MIDI jack. One word on the price, around here these consoles cost 80 credits and upwards, so if you only buy this for making music, the Picker Tracker might be cheaper if you build it yourself, that is. That being said, this is a nice piece of hardware, and if you're in for some retro gaming, it's not the worst thing to throw your money at. Ok, for fun and giggles let's add some vocals to the track and then wrap up this video. Yeah, and that's it for today. The Ambernic RG35 console running Linux and Little Piggy Tracker, used for making music. So is this really a cheaper option than using the Pico Tracker? As always, it depends. If you already own one of these consoles, of course, it's cheaper. But the downside may be that you can't get MIDI to work correctly, and that recording your own samples or using them may be more complicated than on the Pico Tracker. That being said, Little Piggy Tracker can run on a lot of devices, among them Windows based PCs, or the ever so popular Raspberry Pi devices, and many more microcontroller computers. So if you found this interesting or useful, please do the YouTube thing. You can also support this channel by buying my music on Bandcamp or joining my Patreon. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very very soon. Bye bye.